All right, geometry nodes for Blender have been out for a while now, and everyone's probably seen all the cool like scattering and particles and procedural effects and stuff, but there's also a lot you can do with them for character modeling and rigging and just general data management organization. So this is the first of hopefully several videos about these other uses. We're going to start with UV retopology. So well, I've been working on this new character's outfit and a bunch of my topology is pretty wacky, and that's because this outfit began its life in Marvelous Designer. This is a program where you draw 2D patterns, and then it uses cloth sim to stitch them together. And that's pretty cool, because you can do stuff like this, and really get nice cloth. But because of how it works, you have dynamic topology, which if we go over here, we can see it's pretty funky. And left that one on triangles, even. So now that I've got it in Blender, I want to retopologize it. And there's lots of things you could use for retopology, but in Marvelous Designer, we have the advantage of already having a UV map because this pattern here just becomes your UV map. So like, this is already pretty organized and pretty well laid out. So if there's a way to quickly go from this UV map to clean topology, that would be great. And that's actually pretty common in other programs. Usually MD gets used into ZBrush, which has had retopo UV retopology for years, but Blender doesn't. But with GeoNodes, we can build it. First things first, I'm going to duplicate this sleeve and then hide everything else we don't need to touch yet. And we don't need that mirror modifier. We will start with cleaning this UV map up a little bit. This geometry is all one piece, but the UV map is several because of how the pattern worked in MD. So there's no point in going into all the fancy nodes if we don't first fix this. All right, so everything will be easier if this is one big rectangle, and these pieces are rectangular, so we just need to stitch them together and realign some edges. So let's start with moving that in and grabbing these. I'm going to use the UV Toolkit add-on, which I think might ship with Blender these days. If not, you can find it on Google, or other UV add-ons have similar uh, controls. So I'm going to use a line, which sets everything to the top, uh, the position of the top vert in this selection. And do that for this as well. I want to try to keep the spacing of these three loops, as that's a pretty important area here where the spacing is different. I had those cut in in Marvelous Designer itself. So now I'm going to use distribute, but leaving those points out. And this evenly spaces things. I'm only worried about the edge here. And let's get this scaled up to match. Align again. Now to stitch these together, I'll move this in and scale these to zero on X and then under the W menu, the well, it's W by default, it's the special menu, which is also up here, uh, we can do Now all these are attached together. And I suppose I better distribute those and those. And same idea here. We can use the align screen X as well. Actually, that doesn't do it. Well, that'll do it. And distribute and then merge by distance. All right, now everything should be happy. Now let's select all of the outer edges and all the edges we don't want to change. That'll be these loops too. And hotkey P pins them. They've turned red. What pinning does is now if I re-unwrap this, it's not going to change those points. So you unwrap and it has re-unwrapped and filled out the interior. And this still might not be entirely even, so I'm going to get the relax brush on lock border and just go over this stuff a bunch and that should even everything out and if we turn on the stretch display which should be somewhere up here we can get some idea of if this is helping or hurting so 
we won't spend more time on that for now, but that is something you might want to spend more time on in your own project. Now let's stretch that. It doesn't really matter if it fills the bounds or not for what we're doing here. That's good enough for the UVs for now. Now we need to get the mesh to be unwrapped to those UVs. So let's get into the geometry nodes. So first up, we want to unwrap something to its UV map. I'm going to make a new plane and rotate this 90 degrees so we can see it to, with the camera. And this is going to be our UV reference. And I'm going to add a geometry nodes modifier. We're not going to use the geometry of this plate at all. That's just there if we need to see it. Instead, we're going to get object info and our object will be our target sleeve. I'll hide everything. I guess we can keep the group input. It. And I just remembered that this has 90 degrees of rotation on it because it came from Marvelous Designer. So I've cleared the rotation and scale. And now I'll move this to the side, otherwise it's right on top of it. So we want to set this to the position of the UV. So to get the UV, we need a named attribute. It's called UV map. There it is. We can even check out the position data by looking at it, That's showing us the position. So at the moment, this mesh is in its world space position and we want to set it to be in its UV map position. So for that, we just need a set position node and there we go. Now it's in its UV map position. It looks kind of crappy. It's flat on X and Y because UV map is just X and Y and not Z. So first things first, let's rotate this so it faces our camera a bit more conveniently. We will get a vector rotate node. And we'll just set that to Euler and rotate it by 90 on X. And now we are looking at it. And there's something wrong with the edges. And that is because we haven't split edges where the seams of the UV map are. So let's go back to the original mesh. And we don't have any seams marked at all, actually. If we look here, I've got crease sharp, I've got seams on, and I've got freestyle edge marks. So let's go back into the UV mode and do a seams from islands. So now there is a seam on the bottom. And now in our geometry nodes, we want to split on the seams, except there is no seams. Geometry nodes doesn't actually support seams, but it does support edge and uh, crease edge and sharp. So I'm going to select all my seams and mark them as sharp instead. And now when we come back here, I can do sharp edge. And before we do that position change, we will get an edge split. Actually split edges. And there we go. We could just split every single edge that also solves the problem, but that is actually a bit rougher on the performance than otherwise. So there's no reason to do that when we can get that seam info. We could also use a vertex group or something, but that can have problems on triangles. So since I'm not rendering this mesh yet anyway, it doesn't matter if I use sharp for this. But I might subsurf it so I didn't want to use crease. To get a bit more control in case we wanted to adjust this, let's also get some more math here. We've got a vector math add, or actually I'll change that to a subtract. And this lets us move around the position. So I'm centering this on its origin point, which is just a little easier to look at. And let's also do a scale node. And I'll put that after, so because this scales it to the origin. And we might as well hook up all this stuff to the input. Actually, instead of scale, it should be a multiply so we can adjust each axis separately, shouldn't it? So 
There's lock rot and scale. Our split group. All right, so now we have a group that unwraps something to its UV map and lets us move it around a bit too. Let's name this. Have one named that. Oh, I'll override my old one in this file. Now we have a UV reference, which is a copy of the mesh in its UV position. Now what we want is a way to take another mesh we put here and get the original position copied to it. So for that, we need to save that position in the first place. So going back to the original sleeve, we'll add a new node group, and we'll just call this save position. We just need a door named attribute and a position node. Set that to vector, and let's call that base location. Now, if we are looking on this mesh, we can see that base location actually exists because this is inputting that. Next, we want to make a new mesh, which is what we're actually going to use for our retopology. So I'm going to copy the UV rep, but delete this modifier and note it's in the same location as this. And I'm just going to call this topo input. Subdivide that a few times just so we can see what's there. Now let's get yet another, and we'll call this retopo output. This one needs a new node group. And we are going to get another object info and target the UV ref. I'm clearing this field after I let it fill in the uh, the default here. Otherwise, if you leave something in any of these fields, it will keep that linked into your file anytime you use this group in the future. And that's really annoying. Okay, let's hide everything else so that we can see what we're doing. So we're looking at our UV ref, but that's because our output is inputting the UV ref. Let's have it also input the retopo input. And we can look at that instead. It's a Node Wrangler Shift Alt click to set something to the output, which is different from Control Shift click to get a viewer node. So, what we want to do now is on this geometry, we want to transfer the position of the original world space of the sleeve. So that will be coming from the UV ref. We will get a sample nearest surface node. And we are going to sample for that position base lock, which doesn't show up until I have that uh, plugged in. a set position node on our detail mesh. And now we can see it is up there. Now we will unhide everything. If I set the output to be at zero matching the sleeve, we can now see that this is on the surface of the sleeve. So we are successfully retopoing. All right, success and no complicated node groups even. Now, this isn't the only order you can do this in. You don't necessarily have to pull the position from the UV ref. You could have a group that does the unwrap again and targets this directly. And 
combine all this stuff together. But I've done it this way because that's nice and bite-sized, and I don't want to try to cover everything in one video. So the next question is just how do we get something nice here? And I think I will make this pretty easy. I will just dissolve all these unneeded edges and turn this back into a square and snap these to the corners. Since we made this into a rectangle already, this is nice and easy. In fact, I will get rid of that entirely and split this instead so we can see what's going on. All right, and I will make the same number of cuts here as I already had loops on the sleeve. And then I'm going to keep some of these areas. And notice um, I'm making a cut, then I'm doing X and locking to the X axis, but I have the vert snapping on. So that makes it very easy to snap to these loops. So G and then X to constrain the axis. And then it's wherever my cursor goes. All right, now I'm going to turn the snapping off for the rest of these. So I can kind of decide how many loops I want here. That's probably enough for that. And then, you know, I'm probably going to cloth sim this mesh, but I'm also probably going to subdivide it. So of course, if I have less loops than the original, then I will lose some of the resolution of the mesh. But what you need there, well, that depends on your specific project. So now I can hide the old mesh. And I can come over here and let's grab a copy of that. And all we need to do is apply this Geonodes or Visual Geo to Mesh. Let's shade it smooth. And there we go. Retobo sleeve. Nice and even. Maybe we can put a subsurf on there. That edge. And now let's get everything else back. And there we go. Okay, so obviously there's a lot more we could do with this setup. Like, what if you wanted to have it so that when you are editing these points, if you moved it here, it displaced off the mesh? Or if you wanted to keep working if this went off of the UV target? Well, we'll get those topics in later videos. And then there's also other topics like all of this UV wrapping stuff. Like, how am I going to deal with other parts of this garment that aren't going to easily turn into a rectangle? Well, I am going forward with unwrapping the rest of this, so I will probably be at least posting about that on Twitter. So if you want to know more, like and subscribe for the next video. Follow me on Twitter where I post regular updates and you can ask me questions. And... If you make anything with this technique, feel free to tweet it at me and I will republish it. Thanks everyone. See you in the next video.